about you Cause it don't matter what I do yeah. I can't stop thinking Ooh. about you <laughs> Wait for some off notes there Jeff <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the uh, Jabi's Makawi Experience. Today we are blessed to have um, the brother Ngārino here at um, Jabi's Makawi Studio. Just got a bit of a fire rushing up. How are you feeling, my bro? Yeah, honoured, bro. Honoured. Honoured to be here, bro. Thank you for inviting me into your turu tapu, the sacred chair, where all wisdom gets channeled and uh, the beauty gets made. It's, a, it's actually an honour to have you here, my bro, and um, <clears throat> it's... It's 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 buzzy, you know. I've seen you, I've seen you, I've seen you around on social media. Um, seen you on a few podcasts, and um, now to be doing it myself and have you here in my studio, it's um, yeah, it's just it's amazing. I've just finished cutting your hair. Um, got to know got to know quite a lot about you. That hopefully we'll be able to share with the with the viewers today. Um, but yeah, first, first question, bro. Um, uh, uh te uh, e te hunga mā taki taki uh, Ko wai tēne noho ana ki roto i te tūru nei Ko uh, tainu i te waka, ko taupiri i te maunga Ko waikato te awa, ko waikato te iwi Ko ngāti mahuta, uh, ko ngāti naho ngā hapu uh, Ko te huka nui a muri, uh, ko mauri a ngā marai uh, Ko te whānau totore wā e mihi nei uh, Ki te taho taku kui kui uh, Ko mā tātua, ko tāki timu uh, Ko te arawa ngā waka uh, Ko mau wao te maunga, ko tauranga te moana uh, ko ngā iwi katoa o tauranga moana e mihi nei No ngā hapu katoa o tauranga moana e mihi nei uh, Nō no reira ki te whānau whānui mātaki mai nei uh, Tēnā ko te taha Māori e kōrero nei uh, I am also from uh, the bloodlines of Scandinavia um, From a tupuna named Magnus Bista uh, Who travelled through to uh, the Shetland Islands in Scotland um, And in the 18, early 1800s uh, My ancestors arrived in Dunedin Upon the waka t- uh, Timaru uh, my father was born in uh, Wellington and uh, met my mother and out came me and my siblings. That's where the, um, that's where the beautiful bear genetics come from, eh, my bro? Those ginger bears, bro. It's uh, one of those, uh, those things that I was always going to be a little bit uh, gun shy of, but now I'm embracing the, the gang array that I've got, bro, because it's a DNA fuckapapa that's speaking through my ancestors. And um, just just hearing you speaking there, you, you, have, a, uh, you have beautiful deal for someone like myself who's just on the journey trying to trying to, um, you know, learn. I wasn't, didn't have the blessing to be brought up. Um, I brought up until Pākehā, so um, how, 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 was it, how was your upbringing? Uh, very staunch, bro, very staunch. I think out of all of our siblings, mum um, kind of protected me um, as, the, as the youngest of, of our line um, and put me through a kōhanga reo system, bro. So I was quite lucky to grow up on, around the kaumatua who had beautiful dialect, beautiful reo. Um, and understanding that you know the language was only one element into the culture, where te ao Māori, the elements of wānanga is always around us. Everything is wānanga when you can become nothing, and that's when you can inherit the most Damn. genes, bro. Your subconscious mind starts to program itself. Say that again, bro. Say that again. I have no idea what I just said, bro. It just you know, wisdom drops in, bro. I deliver, and Damn. it's up to you I'm to gonna, catch I'm it. I'm gonna look back and <laughs> we'll, we'll cut that up. <laughs> but it hit. That hit when you said that. Nice. Um, so yeah, bro. What's the um, Talk, talk to us about the mahi that you that you um, get up to. You. I know you do many things, but yeah, um, I, I, I hold wānanga retreats around uh, around Aotearoa, and I started around the globe. Um, and I guess I, I found my calling in it, bro. There was a purpose that needed to be delivered to the people. And I think uh, I was much fortunate enough to be able to dive deep into the ancestral knowledge and the ancestral ways. And I suppose during that awakening, they guided me to the right people to teach me the things I needed to teach, um, so that I can feel. Uh, into the essence of how powerful our people are, because we're powerful people, bro. Really powerful. You know, we may be the biggest tutus in the world, but you know, you show us one way to how to get into something, and we'll figure out five ways how to define it. And I think that's just um, you know, spiritual intelligence, bro. We have a different X factor about us, and so promoting that to our people, we you know, become not only emotionally intelligent, but your spiritual essence becomes really, really powerful. You can use that as a tool, bro. Connection becomes next level. Yeah, I noticed that just um, speaking with you while I was um, giving you a fire ration up. Um, but yeah, what what do you feel like it was that um, that drove you towards that kind of mahi? Um, 
Well, it was um, driven by you know another big kayako of mine, Korongapo Wehi, um, when I was being of service to uh, Te Wakahui or Kapakaropu. Um, he was very big on statistics, you know, and and looking at um, providing those statistics to the people, but also um, not just identifying that 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 affects, but finding solutions for our people because we had the answers within us. And um, once I was awakened to that, I kind of. Uh, probe the question, oh, you know, Koro, me pehiana, te kōrero mō tātou te iwi Māori, you know, where do we go? And one question he fired back at me, bro, was, you know, how, what are you going to do to change the world? I had this big idea in my head, oh, we'll march to Parliament, because everyone just marches to Parliament and does that, and we'll wave our flags and they'll hear us. And he goes, how about you just look yourself in the mirror? And that hit me. Mm. That hit me big, and... and for a young man that hadn't quite looked himself in the mirror yet to identify that if I really wanted to change the world, I'd first change myself. Yep. And so um, the internal practice began. And so I started cleaning myself up from the inside out and more knowledge just kind of dropped in and I found levels upon levels to be able to provide formulas that would be one day a medicinal property for our people. And that's just through Waitua, through Modi, through connection, through knowing who you are, makes you... Hold your head up a little bit taller, puff your chest out a little bit more, be proud to be Māori. It's cool to be Māori these days. Oh, hard, hard. Damn cool to be Māori. Everybody hard. wants to be Māori. Hard. <laughs> so um, are, there, are there any like common things that you see, that you're seeing amongst people that are, that are coming to you for these wānanga? Lost, bro. Lost. Lost, disconnected, lost. Um, the turmoil starts at you know, our mental health and well-being where we have the highest suicide step in the country as Māori, ethnicity-wise. Then you look, you go a little bit more deeper into that, bro, and Māori males are the second highest in the world. Ratio Damn. per capita, bro, we're up there. Damn. And to me, that was that, that hit home, bro, because I've, I've been to those dark spaces before too, bro, and I've, I've fell into that trap. I've hit the death spiral, and it took a lot for me to go into the, the darkness, the poor, and really wānanga what I actually needed to pull myself out, because you've only got yourself down there. It doesn't matter how much support you have in the world of light, bro. Down there, you've only got yourself. Um, so yeah, it was a um, it was a wānanga that I really needed, but I found some amazing solutions to be able to resolve some of the problems that we're facing in our everyday lives, bro. So that was the real pinnacle point for me in terms of the awakening process. Yep. And you've just re- just released an app. Uh, just want to speak to us about what what's the app about? Yeah, uh, the the app is it's one part that I serve inside of our Wānanga practices. So, you know, for people that don't know it, um, just download www.orokoroa.co.nz. Uh, we're available on um, uh, Apple and uh, Google Play, so both Apple and Android. Um, it's a meditation app, um, and bro, and, and, and Orokoroa doesn't translate to meditation. Orokoroa is a man, has, has mana on its own, and really when you break down it, break down the kupu, the syllables can break up into three pieces where... Orokoro means consciousness, if you were to describe it in one word, but oro, the word oro means vibration or frequency. Oko means the space in the realm of tapu, so the sacredness. Mm. And roa means the journey of when you hear people say, I'm on the journey, yep. journey of self discovery, etc. That speaks to that. And so when you look at the poetical language of how our ancestors would create words, it would be based on not only just the, um, the, the conscious level of how you think, but the spiritual essence in which that's drawn from. And so when you combine those two together, you have like an intelligence from your, um, from your mind versus a, a spiritual intelligence bound together. You create knowledge and essence together. Man, it's, it's a powerful source, and it's hidden in our language. And so mm. Orokoroa is the Māori state of consciousness through timeless energy. When I talk about timeless energy, bro. We're talking about fifth dimensional world stuff. Yep, That's like three yep. D dimension go into here. It, brother, go into fourth it. world, fourth world dimension is a transition over, and fifth world dimension, bro, is about timeless energy. It's the space where the subconscious mind, the unseen mind, can be programmed into such a powerful source. Damn. But there are also so much trauma lying in this in, in this space as well that. To do any form of work in your subconscious mind, it's about aligning yourself to the traumatic experiences, whether that's been direct, indirect, or intergenerational. So there's a lot of seeds that have been planted there from um, epigenetics, and epigenetics knows that energy jumps from one DNA to another, 
we have over 1.6 billion cells, if not more, in the body. That's mm. a lot of ancestors that are roaming around there waiting to be awake. Yep. And so in our DNA processes, bro, we talk to them way to a form. And once we awaken an ancestor, bro, they provide us two sustainable energies. One's to do with trauma or traumatic experiences and one's to do with wisdom. So if you can hear it intergenerational trauma, you can hear it intergenerational wisdom. Once you heal that trauma, your payoff is the wisdom. Then you use that wisdom into your physical reality, bro, from your metaphysical experience. Bro, you get to create this world. You can, get, you can create whatever you want in this space and time. Yep. You know, we're only here for a small amount of time and whilst we're here we might as well leave a legacy whilst we're here we might as well leave it in a better position than when we found it so we are the now we are the tupuna me and you are the Damn. ancestors of our time and if we don't do something about it for our people by our people seven generations down from us they won't know our name yep. but if they remember who we are they'll look at this podcast in seven generations time and go our quarrels are on hard <laughs> um, you you, you what I pick up about you is you think on a on a on a totally different level. Were, were you did you always think this way, or is it has it been a, a process over time? I was always a uh, special child. When I was growing up, I was special needs child. Oh, yeah. You know, and so in our Maori practices, bro, you know, Down syndrome, albinos, anybody that had any form of deformity was deemed special. And deemed as almost tohunga because they saw the they saw the world from a completely different perspective. Yep. And so I was one of those children that were awaki. So I was always kind of out of the fairies type of thing. But I think through colonization, it kind of boxed me up a little bit, and it allowed me to be able to discipline those elements. Um, but when I fused it with Māori Matauranga, I I understood the laws of it, the L O R E laws, the energetic laws of it. Mm. So it allowed me to be able to step into those spaces safely download knowledge, download wisdom, bring it forth to the people so people can consume it, trigger, trigger wisdom off in front of them, then that, awakening, that awakens them, and then obviously we've got this transmuted energy that's transcending from something higher. I don't, I don't need no book for any knowledge to be able to tell me what I already know. Yep. What I know is already enough, yep. and I am enough. Bars. Bars. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, oh, that's just... So like totally mind blowing to hear just to hear you say that I'm trying to my brain's just ticking off trying to unpack everything that you've um, that you've that you've went through. So th- these are the type of things that you're talking about wh- while you're working with people in Wananga and yeah, but probably a little bit more deeper, a little bit deeper. Yeah, deeper. Only because we set the sacredness of it, bro. Yeah, you know we there's me and you in this room, and I'm not saying it's not sacred, bro. That's why I call it the sacred chair. Yeah. You know there are, there are two two brothers that are in the world at the moment that have created their own businesses and um, dedicated their commitments towards a purpose that are bigger than themselves. Yep. You know, this is my life now, and I'll be serving this for the rest of my life. And um, Might venture off into different dimensions and different forms of this particular business that I serve, but ultimately it's here to serve the people. It's here to connect to the people, bring the real to the people. So when we do open up these sacred spaces inside of our wānanga retreats, we, we dive. We dive in deep, bro, and, it's, and we dive to the darkest hole, and we and we go and save the souls of our people. And how how does that feel for you when when you see those transformations? Because you'll be seeing them, you know, with your own eyes. How does how does that feel for you when you're when you're seeing people make those transformations? It's a reciprocated energy to give me fuel to wake up every day to know that I've done something for our people, to leave a legacy behind, and to make our tupuna proud, to make our ancestors proud. Is um, it's a privilege, it's an honor that I've awoken to my own ability to be able to drive the skill set. Um, and and know that I'm still learning myself. I'm still a baby in it, um, but I am humbled. I'm humbled for the experience, and I'm humbled for everybody that comes in and trusts in the process. Um, because you know we are dealing with a lot of people where there's probably a, a, a minority of Maori out there that know just as much as I know, if not more, yep. and um, walk around matata wiroto te reo Maori and you know mohio kahara watu ana no hiarato kaihia kai but I think that the underlining point is that our Māori is so broad. Yep. And, um, you know, we've all got something to offer as Māori because it's in our whakapapa, it's in our DNA. But there's this lost generation, a lost generation where they don't, where they're, they're too Māori to be Pākehā and too Pākehā to be Māori. And it's yep. kind of weird. Oh, bro, um, that's, exactly, that's exactly my position, eh? You know, like growing up, never knew, quite knew where, 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 where I fit in, you know? 
but I'm on I'm on that journey, and I and I feel like people like like yourself have been attracted into my into my life, and, and yeah. I'm picking up the, the, the knowledge is coming to me, you know. Yeah, it's coming to me. Well, you're a buzzy Slowly. fella, bro. You, you know, like, I, I vibed out at you when maybe a few years ago when I saw you uh, with tricks. I think oh, you were yeah. at some festival, bro. Oh, and he was man, just man. giving you assholes the whole time, bro. And I was just cracking up, <laughs> laughing at the fact, like, bro, you had an infectious laugh, bro. Yep. There was a vibe that everybody like is attracted to. You know, your height, your style, the way you speak, bro. It's your energy. It's everything is to do with the perception of how you see yourself. And if you value that, people are going to see the same thing. And, and that's the key element when you have your awakening, bro. Like your energy, and so your internal energy is far more attractive than what's on the outside. Mm. So, really, on the outside, it doesn't really matter. This is just a temple that we carry. How you dress yourself and how you present yourself every day, that's your choice. But the internal work and the lights that you switch on, bro, people are more attracted to energy than they are to the fake this and the fake that mm. and, the, and the suave this wow. and the materialistic things, bro. That's all matter. That, that's, that yeah. comes and goes. But energy, light force, bro, that's forever. Yep. Um, and while we were talking about um, presenting yourselves, um, you've got a you've got a beautiful moko. Talk to us about that journey and and um, how that's gone for you. Yeah, bro, there was uh, three years in the making. I had a few cousins, first cousins, bro, and and, and they they went up first. It was our generation that was kind of bringing it back within our hapu, our marae, our whanau. And so you know, I'm, I'm the baby of our line, so they. Kind of like, oh, yeah, because you're up, you're ready, and oh, no, 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 no. Plus, you fellas are blacker than me. You won't really see the moko that much on you, when you only when you smile. Yep. So, you know, I used to give them a little bit of shit about that. Bro. But, you know, coming into my own, I really felt, okay, this is a journey that I have to start internally. I can't just go, yep, cool, I like the look of it. There was papa to learn, bro. Yep. Um, there was gorero to inherit. There was, um, there was a purpose to, to claim. Um, and once I had sort of reached where I wanted to land, bro. I, I felt it was time to go into my ancestral house in Tauranga um, and present this um, this tupuna that is on my face. This is a tupuna. Beautiful. And so I wear this tupuna with, um, with such pride and my kaita, uh, Turu Makina is his name and he's based over in uh, the Gold Coast. Um, he, he'd done about five or six of us in a row. Oh. So he was, he was on the hammer, bro. He'd come home from Gold Coast and he just smashed all of us out, bro. And, uh, you know, the caliber of men that he was um, doing at the time was admirable because there were some matato men that he was he was uh, drawing up. And so um, 15 hours, bro, was on the table. Damn. And, bro, one we hit? Just, we just, one hit, we just went for it. You know, they were the cousins, they got it in parts, eh? you know, yep, part yep, here, yep. part here. Three months later, three years later, but I was like, nah, let's just go. So the warrior out of me came out and uh, just, you know, went into this consciousness, bro. It was like, an epic spiritual experience where I became one with the um, the seated hand of where Tamoko started mm. under a tupuna named Uetonga. Mm. Uetonga was uh, he was the main chief or the main uh, deity that resided in the underworld, known as Rarohinga, and uh, he had a daughter named Niwareka, um, and she fell in love with a mortal back here in the world of the living named Mataura. Mm. And uh, yeah, so that story kind of plays out through different tribes and it has different variations, bro. But yep. that's the seated hand. And I went and had a wananga with him. Damn. I went down with him, bro. And I woke up and I, I, I didn't know where I was. All my senses had shut down. Everything had gone. I, I was asleep. I was asleep the whole entire time. Straight up. And I woke up and this was finished. Yeah. Mind mm. you, when it did get to the nose, they left that last, bro. And I sneezed about 20 times, <laughs> bro, because it's real sensitive on the nerve endings here. Eh? So I was yep. cracking up, laughing, going, whatever. And then uh, the Komatua said, oh, he mako uru tākwe. And, uh, and so the mako, the mako is when you hit a nose on the, uh, the shark on the nose. Yep. It sneezes or it falls to sleep, it reacts. So oh. it's known as the shark that came, or came out, of a, yeah. out of his darkness yep. into the light. Yeah. Um, and so um, how, how has... Um, um, affected you since since you know, or not? Maybe this is not the right word. Um, since since getting it, has it has it changed the way uh, you present yourself to the world? Or, bro, I thought I would get um, you know a lot of you know bad stigma or bad perception, bro. But most Pakeha that I come in with, they just are wowed. Yep. They're wowed by it because of how I wear it. Yeah, and I think yep. it's all in the how. All in the wear it, not not in the what you're wearing. So same thing with the energy that same you're talking about. Same thing with about, the energy, right? bro. You know, if you can if you can wear it with 
authenticity and hold as much integrity as you can. You know, like I've I've slipped as well. Yep. Whilst I've wear, whilst I've been wearing it, I've slipped and uh, made some mistakes. Um, and I and I honour them because they were learning lessons that I needed to learn. Um, but they have shaped me to be um, as honest as I can in my walk. And for me, it, there's there's a lot of integrity when you're carrying a matora and you're carrying your tupuna on your face. Yep. There's a lot of weight there, but there's also a lot of power in it when you can use it in the right way. Yep. And so, um, you know, most people say, you know, oh, you got your matora, you know, it must be, it's only the beginning. It's only yep. just, it's, life's only just started. I've, I've, I've seen you on live on TikTok a few times, and, and I can tell you get a lot of international viewers. Um, must get annoying, like, us having that question all the time. What's that on your face? What's that on your face? <laughs> yeah, I don't really respond to any of the uh, the, the TikTok comments because um, you know normally you do get that type of thing. You know. But you know it is it is what it is, bro. And I think if people are really interested in it, they'd go and do the research themselves. Which you know, yeah. But most Maori jump in and say it's a mata ora. Yeah, yeah. Hard, hard. Everyone's got your back on there. Like, oh, <laughs> you fellas answer for me. Kāre te kumare kore no motona ki reka bro. Taito doesn't talk about his own sweetness. I, What's the plans for the future, my bro? Bro, it's big. It's big. The vision is big. Um, and it's to acquire as much land as we possibly can get back Damn. from the impacts of what colonization has uh, wrongfully uh, confiscated. Um, and if I can contribute to that percentage in any form or way before I die, um, I'm going to leave here a happy man. Yep. You know, we, we once owned... Or we're the caretakers of 100% of natural, strong resource in Aotearoa, now to Damn. 3%. We're, we're only 3% title holders under government law. Um, but, you know, there's, there's an opportunity there for us to be able to claim back um, the true essence of who we, who we are. And it belongs to, belongs to the people, it belongs to the whenua. By the time we go back to the rangi, um, we would have hoped to be able to contribute to playing a little bit smarter and um, gaining access back into our whenua taurikura, which is the original states of our land, uh, and bringing back um, the true source of who we are. It's all in the source, not the tomato sauce either, bro. It's, uh, that's, there's, a, there's a richness under this ground, bro, that provides us sustenance and life. And if we're not connected to it, bro, we, uh, we kind of get lost in translation. What is it that, 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 that um, keeps, you, keeps you driven? Because, uh, uh, you know... Mm-hmm. Every, everyone, we have ups and downs. What what do you think it is that keeps you driving towards that that goal? Or? Yeah, it's a, it's always bigger purpose stuff, bro. But it's um, you know, we're talking about this in your name, bro. To you know, it's about pain and pleasure. You know, to be able to focus on any type of pleasure that you are gaining or that you're gunning for in life, you have to understand the pains of where it comes from. Mm. The pains for us of where it comes from, bro, was you know, confiscated land back in the eighteen sixties was. You know, 2.6 million acres in Waikato alone. You know, and that was just stolen land. Yeah. Um, there were there were um, killings at, at at gunpoint where our women and children um, were set alight in churches. Um, there were um, there were screams. Um, you know, there were isolation camps. So our people had suffered through um, some some traumatic experiences during that time, and we as the living still feel that. You know, people might say, well, it's in the past, it wasn't us and blah, 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 but DNA says we still feel that. That is still traumatising our inner being and not setting us free from who we are. So to be able to heal that, bro, is is a preference. So that's probably where I'm projecting my energy is just to heal that first within our own people. Can't blame the government, can't blame blame the systemic worldview in this point in time. Like the Karoa said, look yourself in the mirror. That's talking to all of us. We all got to get on the same pattern if we... uh, if we're to achieve, you know, the might of what that goal might be, which is you know, to acquire mana whenua, mana tangata back into our own hands. And like um, one of the things that people say is they say think big, and you're someone that I talk to. You you think you think really, 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 really big. Has it always been that way, or is it like you'll get to a certain place and you're like, actually, I can think a little bigger, think a little bigger. Yeah, I'm always one to you know stretch as far and wide as I possibly can and work backwards from there because then, then, then there I know my limits, mm. you know. And there are rules of engagement when you're talking about limitless beliefs, but you've got to start somewhere. And if you have this vision in mind that you want to try and achieve something, 
go big and work backwards, come back into yourself. And I think um, the opportunity is there for everybody to do that. And it's just making sure that you know you've got enough support and networks around you to to help guide you through that space. Mm. It's a tough space to navigate by yourself, bro. And you would have learned that through oh, your, own, your own journey. And then uh, you've got family and fano personal things to deal with on top of that, bro. Yep. You know, I've been through those ups and downs, bro, and talking into the real where I hit rock bottom like a few times. Yep. But I was I, I had to um I had to pick myself up, bro, and just be a bit smarter in terms of how I take the right steps forward and focus on the lesson. What did it teach me? Mm. What did it teach me so I didn't stop making those repeated patterns over and over. Yep. I do I can't stop thinking. Yeah. No, just keep singing, bro. Just keep singing. About you. Because it don't matter what I do. Yeah. I can't stop thinking Ooh. about you. Ooh. <laughs> Went for some off notes there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, another beautiful thing about the Maori culture is the is the waiata. Um, why why is that such an important thing, bro? Ah, oh, bro, waiata is an expression of um, energy. It's an expression of Modi, bro. And, you know, it comes from the heart too. Mm. You know, ninety nine percent of Maori know how to access this space. We got a lot of it, bro. We operate from it. And, can probably consider us to be the real coconuts of the Pacific. Mm. You know, we're hard on the outside, bro. You come into our space, we give you the whittle, mm. lay it down for you, bro. The man of the wahine tells you when and when you can't come in, <laughs> bro. And then she tells the man when to speak. <laughs> <laughs> but the power of uh, that that real um, that real loving gesture to us, bro. That's the creamy, milky part of the coconut, bro. That's when you come into all of the embracement of our aroha, and we do that through song through dance, um, through that performing outlet, bro, because it's an expression that everybody can connect to. And uh, it comes from a Modi system called ihi. So when mm. somebody gets up and performs, bro, you can just feel it. It's like the hairs on the back of your neck start to stand up, etc. and you want to get involved. That's called wehi. Mm. And so when the wehi gets uh, connected to, bro, it comes into a connected form called wana. Bro, and then the wana starts, bro. And wana comes from the na verb, that na from the source of whom, nga, the plural of the many multitudes of energy that are in that space. So that's where the word wānanga comes from. And when wānanga can connect all human beings, souls, energies into one space, bro, you can feel that that fire just blazing in front of a bro. So uh, one form of energy output for us is wayata and the modi of wayata. Pazi. Sing. Pazi. Again, again. I'm not. Sing. Got us another tune. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get a performance in here tonight. Yeah, bro, that can be your opening shot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, bro, I might have to, um, I might have to cut it up and um, use it, use it for the intro. <laughs> <laughs> Just cut the flat parts out, <laughs> uh, out of it. Um, so yeah, but you're done. In, you're you're done in Napier, bro. What what are you what are you um what are you what are you doing down here? Whereabouts is it that you? Yeah, we well we're working with um, Hooks Bay Wide. Um, you know, beautiful down here in Atikahuni, bro. You know, the people are awesome. Yeah, you know, I, I was never meant to come down this way, bro. I was, I was meant to go right, right through the middle of the country. And those were the spaces that I was seeing, bro. But you know, the, the, the gesture says is that this is Te Mato a Maui, bro, which is you know mm. the hook of Maui. Bro, and I got hooked by the hook. Mm. Maui threw its hook, bro, and I got pulled right. You know, so it's one of those things where I, I kind of just follow where the waiwa goes, bro, and and this is where the waiwa was at the moment, bro. And, and since I've been serving down here for the last two years, bro, we've we've made some massive yards in terms of the uh, the healing aspect and the empowerment space that we're kind of uh, inspiring our people to do better, demand better of themselves, really recognise the better version of themselves. That kind of talk, bro, it's it's pr- it's priceless. And so, um, yeah, it's it's been a massive journey. And so, so when you're dealing with a lot of a lot of traumas, um. Other people's traumas Is, is it hard Because I, I, I do that for myself Like sometimes I take it on A bit too much When, when my clients are coming in And unloading what, what, what do you do for yourself To to unload that So you're not taking it on Yourself I'll give you a cool little trick bro um, It's it's being the observer Not the absorber 
Mm. So when you're in someone's space, bro, and they're kind of going through, you know, because like, it must be therapeutic for you as a barber, bro, and then people must open up to you. Yeah. And it's key just to be an observer, bro, and just to channel that energy out of them, but not to consume it by being a, an absorber. You know, sometimes mm. we invest too much of our energy into someone's cordial, then we're a part of the cordial. That triggers something in us that's not ours, mm. then we carry that modi home. And so, um, you know, it's making sure that you can hold that space in that right. And then in that right, bro, you, you get the, the option of choice um, to be able to um, make sure that you hold your mana with integrity. But um, another way is just to grab some white, bro, and where water people bro, and just yep. splash it over after the end of your whole day, you know, give your gratitude up into the higher, higher beings that have uh, created that space for you, and, and then carry on, carry on with life. Yeah, but for me, um, it is a bigger role in it, obviously, because it's it's what I go fishing for. Um, and, and, bro, I love it, bro. I love digging down into someone's trauma, bro, and hooking it right out um, because you see the absolute transformation in the person and the light that they, that they now possess. Um, and there are certain rituals that I have to do individually to go away into sacred spaces and deposit um, all of that mumwai and um, allow the... The process of healing to take place mm. in, in the beings that I uh, that I serve. Uh, so yeah, it's a. And so when you speak of hooking hooking the trauma out, um, is it being replaced, how, or are we just taking it away? Or you can never take away the memory of it. Bro. The memory is mm. there forever, but you can separate the pain and the trauma from the memory. And once you start to do that, you allow somebody to be able to take the lessons from what they learned in their traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. And um, it almost like allows that um, scar tissue to be a reminder of that moment, that period in time, but you're not latched to it anymore. It doesn't stop you, and it's not a blockage that stops you from achieving your infinite potential. Mm -hmm. It then clears a canvas for you to be able to plant a seed that you wish to be a part of. I believe they call that leveling up these days. Leveling up. Hey, yep. level, level up. 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 Hey, plant that seed and attract the right people to come into that space so you can climb into this infinite potential space to grow, to grow and be the supernatural being that we, we are because, you know, we are human people having, having this spiritual experience in this walk of life. When we're ready to give this body over, bro, we've got to give the energy back and the spirit still carries on. Bro. Goes <laughs> over to the next chapter and learns new lessons, so... Story of life, bro. It's just endless learning. Be a student of life. You were actually um, speaking. Speaking of being a student, student of life, I was cutting your hair. We we're having a chat, um, and you were talking about your experience of um, uh, of having your own TV show. And then uh, I was setting up for the podcast, and I was telling you, I don't, I don't know how to set these shots up. Clicked on my head, the man right here. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I really like. Like that you did speak about, was it? You went into that space and then you were just a student. Yeah, which was different to my ego who thought I was going in there for fame. Mm. Hey, because I was like, mm. yeah, I'm going to be on the TV show, bro. I'm going to be mean as what a, you know. And once I realized my ego was getting away on myself, I was like, bro, use this as an opportunity to learn as much as you can. Because mm. one day this is going to pay off in your favor. Now I've got an app that I never thought. Ever that where there would be a Maori app that would produce the level of um, knowledge or exposure to our culture mm. um, in a beautiful form, because the, the the bro that shot it did all of these really clean, articulated shots to be able to get a full scope, not just on me, but the the country, the mm. land, the temple, the clouds, the heavens, the skies. When I mean, you're talking about Ayo Tanga, bro. Ayo is the universal code for um, the power of well-being. Mm. Just one word alone, Ayo. And so to get a glimpse into that through a 3D dimensional plane and then come into it and have your own mind and travel into your own 5D dimensional plane, bro, there's this unreal connection that's happening that's, that's feeding you this higher source of knowledge and wisdom. To provide that for the people, bro, globally, that's mind-blowing. So I, I took all my experience from the TV show and put it into this kaupapa um, and mm. made sure that it articulated every shot to the best of my knowledge. So it paid off, bro. And you were saying that you've been using it yourself as well? Yeah, yeah. So um, bro, I'm, 
I don't want to be one of those ones who just goes out there and builds a program and doesn't practice what he preaches. Mm. So, you know, for me, it's about making sure that I can back my stuff up by walking the walk because, um, you know, it's all in the action of the person, eh, bro? It's anybody can talk. But, um, yeah, show me, don't tell me. And so one of those things I hold myself accountable to my own value, bro, is get up and, and do the states of meditation and develop your consciousness and, and keep working on yourself because there are so many layers to you that you don't know about. And I'm keen to know who I am. I'm keen to meet myself right down to the core. And I'll never get there, but at least I'm on the journey to walking to see what that little golden core looks like. What would you um, say to someone that's, that's, that's scared to go inside? Because I know a lot of people are. They're scared to look inside. What would you say to that person? The first thing, very that I would make them identify and acknowledge is whether they can look themselves in the mirror mm. and say they love themselves. Because most people can't. Most people look in the mirror and they'll look away or they'll just look at the image. But if you can look into your eyes and say, bro, I love you and I got you. Damn. Bro, there's some power in it, man. There's some spiritual power that kind of awakens you to go, bro, I, I believe in myself. Damn. There is something deep and intuitive that kind of just triggers that motion. And that's where the journey starts for them. And, you know, it doesn't matter what if you've done really bad things in life or if you've... Yep. Good things, or if you're lost, disconnected, bro. If it all comes back to that one thing, you can look yourself in the mirror and say, "Bro, I love you, and I got you. You're mm. powerful, bro. You're bright. You're a radiant being of light. You're an outstanding peak performer. You're a dynamic life transformer." I say that to myself every day, bro, in the mirror. Mm. And that's not to be fuckahihi about who I am, but that's a given purpose to feed my consciousness, mm. so that I am creating this vocal language inside of myself that there is a bigger calling for me. That, re- that really that really resonates with me, you know, like from the things I used to tell myself growing up to the things I tell myself now, it's totally it's totally totally different. Yeah, you can see it. And I I didn't but I didn't know no better, like I don't know, that's just how that's just how it was for me growing up. And it's and it's the same thing you say where you have to go to the rock bottom me. Eh? Yep. Yep. To come back out. There's a special kind of silence down there, bro, that you stop listening to the bullshit mm-hmm. and you can't, even how, you can't even hear the sound of your own whisper anymore. And it becomes the nothingness, bro, the nothingness of your title, your name, your physical being. Mm-hmm. It's all in the inner essence, bro. And when you can become silent in that space, the answers come. And... This is a space that our people would call or would be known as te kore. Mm. Te kore, the nothingness. Because that's how the world of our creation started. It started from the nothingness. We are the manifestation of Eeyore's eye. Eeyore being the supreme creator, through his time and space and the effect of matter, we are now in a triangle sacred space called a tautoru. And that revelation becomes a magnitude of how much energy he manifested into this realm of the universal plane. And so we belong to all of that. We fuck up up to all of that. Damn. You know, from we are gods, we are animals, we are the celestial stars, we are the realms of the universe, we are everything in Eeyore's image. And when we are supporting one another to contribute to the universal plane, e.g. Papatuanuku, Ranginui, and the environment, we um, recognise how rich we actually are. Wealthy. Damn. I'm just having a bit of a surreal moment just sitting here, sitting here with you like I, I had um, always had a vision to start this podcast um, when, when I opened the studio. Oh, a long time actually before I started barbering. Sometimes it doesn't happen right away. Mm. But it's the same, um, the same with my journey. Um, I'm coming back to Te Ao Māori. And then now I got you sitting here, like, just giving me all these lessons, and as well as as well as the viewers as well. So, man, I got to thank you so much just just for coming, being here today. Oh, thank you, bro. Thank you for having me, bro. I'm sitting in this chair, mm. humbled, humbled. I'm always humbled to sit in other people's presence, bro, because you never know what the quarter is going to be. Mm. You just stay present in that time and that moment, bro. And whatever quarter comes out, that's what the one is. Damn, that's what real soul food is. Damn. 
Um, any last words, my bro? Um, not really, bro. I think you know I've, I've probably expressed enough on, to who I am and where I'm about, uh, what I'm about. Um, but yeah, bro, I I, um, I dig your mahi, eh, bro. I um, thank you, brother. You no, know, not not only is this a, a it's a safe space, mm. eh, this space in here, this this beautiful studio. Um, and coming into a space where you know that you've got some organic stuff coming out and some creative stuff as well, some creative flow, that the value of your mahi, bro, I support 100%. Mm, bro, you know, to me, it's all about making sure that we level up, there is that word again, and, and contributing towards how we, how we level each other up and keep, mm. keep each other accountable to making sure that the standard is there. Um, because for so long, our Māori people have devalued ourselves. Hundred percent. We de- we downplay our skills when we should be promoting ourselves as the best in the world because we created 100. everything, bro. Hundred. You know, we created navigation. You know, if you look at we we created we created Zoom through telepathic powers. We created droning through telepathy of entering into the mind of a bird and can see down. You know, you look at technology, bro. These days, and we are, we created everything already. Yeah. You know, we knew how to enter into that stuff. Yeah. So it's um. It's important that we value the skill set that we have as a people and um, master your skill set, but first master yourself. Mm. Master yourself, and then you'll know where the guided practice is and for you to be able to serve the purpose bigger than yourself. So, Mauri Kia Tato. The brother's going to leave us with a waiata. <laughs> <laughs> on the spot, on the spot. <laughs> yeah, got it. Oh, what, what's a, you, you, what, what's a, what's a waiata, bro? What's a waiata? Whatever you're feeling, my bro, whatever you're feeling. Okay. Um, well, this particular type of waiata, he, 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 waiata Māori, um, and it's called Ayo, uh, composed by Pere Wihungi, I believe, and it was performed by Te Waiorea, and we sing the song inside of our whare. Um And it's about uh, release and encouragement, the essence of your energy. It goes, Tukuna Aroi Mata Kia rere, te papa uri, te ngā uki nō, kā rongo, tukuna roi mata, kia rere. Aio te rongo, aio raia te aio Oraia te marie ki te iwi e tangi atu nei e Aio, aio Bro, that was man. I'm with the wee. Out of it. <laughs> I'm gonna try that one. Out of it. <laughs> yes, that's yeah, the motif. Let's, let's, let's get the TikTok. Let's get the TikTok. Out of it. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Love it, Marvin. Love it. Oh, man. <laughs> and that's a wrap. <laughs>